conference that drew newsmakers from around the country. Among them, the Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. There he is on stage talking with Kara Swisher. He also headed to Hollywood. Thank you both so much for being here. Thanks for coming. Uh, Secretary Pete, we There's Buttigieg with James Corden on The Late Late Show, but his official work focused on infrastructure. We caught up with him in the Inland Empire. The project again. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg visits a park in Fontana, which is receiving a $15 million grant from President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure bill. That money will build a walkway for thousands of students and improve roadways. This is why we fought so hard to get that law through. During this California trip, Buttigieg also announcing grants at a subway in San Francisco with the House Speaker and at L.A.'s port, where L.A.'s mayor describes them this way. Thanks again, let's give a round of applause to our great... Sugar Daddy from Washington, <laughs> D.C. California alone set to receive $28.2 billion to fix roads and bridges, $10.3 billion for public transit, $1.5 billion to fix airports, and $384 million to build EV chargers. While in the Inland Empire, the Secretary joined us for an exclusive interview. Mr. Secretary, welcome back to The Issue Is. Um, this has got to be fun for you going around the country and giving out money. Mayor Eric Garcetti described you as the sugar daddy for the country going around. You feel kind of like Oprah, like you, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. What's this process like? Yeah, I mean, what's exciting about this is, you know, it's one thing to look at a piece of legislation, look at a spreadsheet, look at a PowerPoint and, and see what, what these dollars could do. It's another to look at the highway, look at the bridge, look at the port and stand with the local community leaders expressing what it means to them to be able to solve a specific problem with these federal dollars. Sometimes the problem is a bridge in such bad shape that emergency, emergency vehicles aren't allowed to go over it. Sometimes the problem is, uh, like we saw in the port yesterday, uh, you know, a, an area where trucks can't really get to the containers that they need to. Sometimes the problem, like here in Fontana, includes students having to walk along a highway, literally to get to school and we can bring solutions to that. I think that's why there was such support for this infrastructure package. It's why we had Republicans joining Democrats, uh, at least some of them, uh, to, to help us get it done. And now to actually be able to get on the ground, see the work and uh, and support it in, in, in a very direct way. It's, it's exactly why I think I've got the best job in federal government. Um, another thing you've worked on recently that impacts people in a pretty profound way is rules for traveling. So many complaints about what's happening with the airlines. You on the transportation website actually now have sort of the, the, the rules of the road. How can people access this? How does this impact people in, in a real way when they're traveling? Yeah, so I think all of us have experienced the frustration of trying to get to where you're going and the airline isn't ready, you get canceled or you get delayed and you don't even know what to expect when you're in that situation because you can't get somebody on the phone. I've experienced this not just as a policymaker, but as a passenger. Who's, who's on an airliner just about every other day. Uh, and we know that if we push harder, we'll get results. So we're doing three things at once. Uh, we're enforcing the rules that are there, finding airlines that, that don't uh, refund passengers when they should, for example. Second, we're updating the rules, raising the bar on what is expected of airlines. The third thing we're doing, and it's actually been one of the most powerful, is transparency. We announced that we we're gonna put together a website where you could just find in one easy place how different airlines will treat people according to their customer service plans. Uh, the day we, we uh, said we were going to set up that website, zero out of the top 10 airlines, uh, for example, committed in writing to providing uh, hotel or meal vouchers for you when you get delayed and it's their fault. Uh, and we said, look, two weeks, we're going to put this website up. Within less than two weeks, we had eight or nine of the airlines uh, doing that. So sometimes that, that transparency, that, that sunshine can do as much as some of the other enforcement actions that we're doing. We're, we're going to keep advancing both in order to get results. So people can go to transportation.gov to look at that, and they also can file a complaint if the airlines aren't doing the right thing. That's right. We, we have a consumer protection website. Uh, look it up, uh, your rights as a passenger, on our DOT website. You can get the information about what airlines should do, and if they're not doing it, you can file a complaint, and we will follow up. Uh, we have your back as a passenger, and we will hold airlines accountable for doing what they're supposed to when it comes to things like refunds or taking care of passengers when they get stuck. You know, as the transportation secretary, also we, we move from, from the planes uh, to, to now the cars. Uh, here in California, recently uh, announced that by 2035, all vehicles that are new, that are sold, have to be 
electric vehicles or can't be gas powered vehicles. What do, you, what do you think about that? And is that something that could be a national model? Well, it's interesting to see how the states are trying to go above and beyond what we're doing at the federal level. And uh, I'm, I'm really interested to follow these developments while we continue to set a national policy that's the baseline for all of this. We need to move in the direction of electric vehicles. And look, industry's already there. At least one major automaker says they're not even planning to make uh, gas cars past 2035. But we've got to make sure that this happens quickly enough to help us beat climate change. We've got to make sure it happens affordably enough that it's it's not just wealthy people, uh, but uh, uh, low-income people who are the ones who know, most need those gas savings if they can afford the EVs in the first place. And we need to make sure that this is a made-in-America EV revolution. And this country that has such a proud tradition of automaking, uh, it, it's exciting to see kind of 100 years after cars exploded onto the scene in the first place, uh, see how that EV revolution is going to accelerate. In the meantime, most people still driving gas-powered cars. Gas prices, obviously, one of the most important issues for so many people. We've seen it go down now for several months. Where are we headed in terms of gas prices? So we're gonna keep pushing, first of all, to seek to have gas prices go down, and secondly, to have fuel economy go up. Americans are already saving billions of dollars because of the uh, fuel economy standards that our department maintains. It started in the 70s, and we keep ratcheting it up uh, to make sure that you can go further on a tank of gas so you don't have to fill up as often. And when you do fill up, we want that to be affordable. The president's taken a lot of actions uh, that I think are part of the reason why we've seen gas prices prices go down every day this summer. We're going to keep pushing. I'll, I'll wrap things up because you are bringing rain. You are the shaman. We've been in a drought for six months, so not only are you bring infrastructure funds, you're bringing rain. Uh, but just, uh, 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 we know you're, we've talked to you about your kids, just had a birthday. Uh, what's the biggest surprise so far of fatherhood? And, um, and and talk a little bit about life in Michigan, too, because yeah. you moved to Michigan. Why that decision and what that's like? Yeah, we're in Michigan because the kids' grandparents are there. And as every parent knows, when you can turn to uh, your parents or in-laws to, to help out, that makes a huge difference from a child care perspective. And of course, it's where Chaston grew up. Uh, look like every proud parent. Uh, we're, we're delighted and uh, so thankful that our, our one-year-old twins are, are happy and are healthy. Uh, I think the biggest thing you, you know, we found as, as parents is uh, not only do you discover what it means for children to depend so completely on you, you, define how, you find out how much you as a parent depend on others, so the, the proverbial village that it takes to raise a child, your friends, your family, uh, who are there for you when you need that help, whether it's something really uh, serious like the hospitalizations that we went through early on with our kids, or something as simple as figuring out what to do when you're running late from work and, and somebody's got to uh, pick up the kid from daycare. And uh, we're, we're just, uh, we're so blessed to have a great support network with friends and family. And, uh, and we're working, of course, back on the policy side to make it a little easier for all working parents to afford uh, to, to be the parents they want to be. And part of that is something is just to bring it back to transportation, uh, something as straightforward as making sure your commute's a little shorter so you get more time with the kids that you love. Right. Even in the rain, you're on message. Thank you very much for bringing the money and the water. Uh, we appreciate you know, it. You blame the, for enough the, stuff the, we don't do. I guess yeah, I'll take credit for The rainmaker, <laughs> Secretary Pete Buttigieg, great you. to see you and great to have you back in SoCal. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, the fact that we had a few seconds of rain might have been more newsworthy than anything that he said. <laughs> it was quite something to have that for a few seconds. Our thanks to the Secretary.